It's hot, it's flaming, it's blocky, it's Vauxhall Flames. This is what we're going to be making today. It's actually surprisingly easy to make, so let's get into it. So, first things first, we're going to go make a new FX Niagara emitter. We're going to go new emitter, and we're going to base it on the fountain emitter, because we want something that's moving upwards. A fountain is slightly different from a flame, but it's a good enough starting point. So let's start with that emitter, call it uh, something like Voxel Flame or whatever you want to call it. Opening that up, we see this fountain over here. Immediately we're going to change a couple of things, because this thing has a gravity force. We do not want gravity, we only want our particles to go up. We don't want them coming back down. Secondly is, uh, this is using a sprite renderer. We don't really want sprites because we're using voxels. We're going to uh, delete that as well. And then pressing the little plus icon here, we're going to add a mesh renderer instead. Going over here to the meshes, one array element, index one. You can just literally use the one meter cube that comes with the Unreal Engine. And uh, this is not uh, very, uh, very fire-like so far, is it? Well. Let's start by making it the right colors. The way we can do that is by going back here and going a new material. Uh, let's call it a flame material. And in there, we add a node called particle color. And we just hook that up into the emissive color. You probably want to also add a multiply node uh, to actually like make it a little bit more emissive and make it like glow and stuff like that. So let's multiply a particle color by like three. Also, don't forget to apply the material. Back in our emitter, we can enable material override and then add a new material override. Opening up this menu, we can uh, then add in the flame material we just made. And as you can see, it's black. And that is because we don't have a particle color set at the moment. It's using the particle color. It's looking at the particle emitter. It's saying, give me the color and I'll use that for uh, my material. But we don't have that set up yet. So let's get into that next. So selecting your scale color, you will see this menu over on the right hand side. We're going to change it from RGB and alpha separately because we don't really need that to RGBA linear color curve. And now we will see something that's a little bit more straightforward and easy to work with because the upper color over on the left here is the color at the start of the particle lifetime. The color at the right here is the color at the end of the particle lifetime. And there's the alpha, but since we don't have a translucent material, we can ignore that. So we go here and we say, let's make this a, a darkish orange like color. And then we take this and sometimes it's a little iffy. You double click. There we go. And we make it a little bit more red. And sometimes it's a little weird. So just disabling and enabling it will make your fire the proper colors. You might want to drag this red a little bit closer to like the middle-ish so that it starts becoming red a little earlier. So you have a little bit more of that redness in your flame. But right now, uh, as far as color goes, this is pretty much what we're going to go with. Now, the shape location uh, with the fountain standard is sphere. We're actually going to change that to being a cylinder. And we're going to set the cylinder radius to something like 200. Just make it a little bit bigger. Uh, you'll see why in a second. Now we're starting to get something that's a little bit more like a flame, but still, it, it needs a little bit of work. So... What we're going to do next is in the particle update, we're going to click on this add new module to group and we're going to add a particle uh, scale mesh size. And you'll see your particles just entirely disappear. And that is because you need to go into the entire node for the emitter and we go look for scale. Mesh scale mode is on set. So it now has scaling data, but it's not sure how to use that, so it just doesn't. Instead, we make that uniform, and there are our particles again. So we have our scale factor here. Uh, let's make that uh, factor from float, so it's 
always going to be perfectly square. And then we're going to make that float uh, from a curve. So now it goes from big to small. But what we really want is it from small to big to small. So what you do is you right click, add key. You can add that key somewhere around here-ish. And then the first key is actually gonna go back down. So now what it does is when the particles are spawned, they are very, very small, then they become bigger, and then they become smaller again before they get despawned. And slowly but surely, this thing is starting to look like a proper fire. But it's still a little lacking. I mean, compared to this, it's it's just it's just not quite there, is it? Well, that's because we're just working on the first emitter right now. We're going to change this into a system now, with a couple of different emitters to make the look we actually want. So after you've done all that, you uh, make sure to apply and save. And then you can right click on your emitter, create Niagara system. Then when we open up that system, we see the emitter we've just made, as well as the voxel flame system um, node itself. We can ignore this, but now we have this system over here. So let's uh, copy that over, make a second one. And we are going to change a couple of things here because we want a flame that is wider at the base and narrower at the top. You can do that in a couple of different ways. You can mess around with a lot of different forces and make it so that the particles actually move in that way. Instead, we're going to do something a little simpler. And that is, we're going to go to this shape location here and we're going to set the radius for this back to 100. And we have an emitter that's much narrower, but we can't really see the difference, and that's because they both go up to the same height. So we can uh, decrease the velocity here. It's um, in the wider flame. Uh, if we go to add velocity, and we say the minimum is 300 for this one, and the maximum is like 650 maybe, uh, it'll not go up as high. And then we can also go into the uh, initialized particle and we can set its lifetime instead of 1.4 to 1.75. We can set it from 1 to, let's say, 1.2. So now the wider flame uh, will only be at the bottom. And then we can add a little bit more velocity to this. So let's say we uh, have this at, at least 600 to 1000. And if you want to, you can turn off the wider flame emitter to just see the narrower one. And maybe, actually, it could stand to be a little bit more narrow even. So maybe let's go down to 80. Let's, look, let's go down to 70. Let's live on the edge a little bit here. And uh, we can also play around with the uh, cylinder height a little. So let's set that to 50 so that the particles all spawn a little closer to each other. And just like that, we are getting somewhere. Now, the spawn rate also is important. You probably want the spawn rate for the uh, bottom flame, the wider one, to be a little bit uh, higher than the narrower one. So let's set that to 150. And slowly but surely, we're starting to get a little bit of a flame shape here. Now, you're going to want to play around a little bit with the colors, because obviously uh, this is meant to be the hotter part of the flame, the bottom part of the flame. So we actually don't want this to go as red as quickly. And we want this part of the flame to go... Where's the color? There we go. To maybe... You can also... A very, very important part of this is in the shape location. We can set a offset mode. It's by default set to none, but if we set it to default, we get an XYZ position. So let's increase the offset here by 100 so that the narrower emitter is actually higher up. It starts higher up. Maybe even could do something like 250, honestly. It's maybe a bit too much. Let, let's go back to 150. It's a little bit of tried and error to make this work the way you want it to work, but slowly but surely you will see your particle system coming together a little bit. Maybe the max lifetime here is a bit too high still, so let's set that to 1.5. 
that that's starting to look like something halfway decent, isn't it? But it's still missing something relatively important. Because if we go back here, we can see we have these smoke particles as well. And that's really making the finishing touch, right? So that's actually relatively easy as well. We can just copy over this emitter as well. And first and foremost, we want this color ramp to be a little bit more um, gradient again. And we want this yellow color to actually change to the red color we have here. Now, taking another good look at this, I actually think this red color is a little bit too light. So make it a little darker. That might work out relatively well. You might also need to play around with the material a little bit more. I set it to multiply by five. That might just be a little too much. So let's go back to three and a little bit more towards orange rather than magenta might also uh, do as good. And then use this hex linear code to set the starting color for these particles over here. Just copy and paste it in and then set the ending color to just being that same color but much darker, almost black, honestly. We're going to make this shape radius even smaller, only a little bit, so let's go to 50. And again, if the colors aren't quite updating, just disable the scale color for a moment and then re-enable it. It should update the colors. And now it might be a little bit too orange, but again, it's, it's a little bit of trial and error through the entire process, uh, but you'll probably figure it out. And a very important thing here is that the scale mesh size should not go as large as the other two. So just take that key down a little and in the shape location, uh, make this offset much higher so it really only affects uh, the very top here and that's starting to look like something decent now maybe we need this to go to black a lot quicker now i actually think that the velocity for this is a bit too much at a thousand so let's make it six to eight hundred actually let's make it 500 to 800 for this one and that's starting to look a lot more like it so this way we have a pretty good flame but now if we actually drag this into our world uh next to the one i have prepared for you before you will see that it's uh pretty damn huge and the issue comes in when we want to scale it down because we can't really scale it up or down we can only change the emitter size but the actual particles will stay the same size and that is very very annoying Luckily, the fix for that is relatively easy as well. And if we just select the emitters we want to apply this to and we type in local, we can see local space if we set that to true. We want to set that to true for all the emitters, obviously, in this case. But in some particle systems, maybe you don't want every single emitter to be uh, affected like that. Anyway, so now that that's all uh, set to true, we want to uh, save this. If we go back now and we scale it down, we will scale it down as a whole. And just like that, we've more or less made a copy of the one I have prepared. It's a slightly different because obviously every time you're going to make something, it's going to be looking slightly different. But by and large, that is how you make a voxel flame. You can put this on a torch, you can put this in a fireplace and whatever you want in your voxel art style game. Looking at it from a little further away, it actually just straight up looks like a normal flame as well. I would not recommend you do that because if you're going to do that, you might as well just use sprites because they are a lot cheaper to render. So only really use this if people are going to be looking up close and can actually like see the perspective on the voxels for now i want to thank you for watching this tutorial uh, next time we'll be back with more unreal goodness let me know if you want to see more particle system tutorials i always like playing around with the niagara particle systems they're very very powerful you can do a lot of fun things with them and honestly we're only just getting started making cool shit